Now, before we proceed further in this course, I want to do two improvements in the response which we are sending from the API. So let's go to VS Code. And here in the user controller, we have created two APIs get logged user and get all users. And if I go to Postman, and if we have a look at the response of these two APIs, you will see that in the response, we also have the encrypted password. Now, in the response, we don't want to send the password because this encrypted value can be read by hackers and it can be used for logging into a user's account. So we don't want to send this password in the response. In the same way for get all users also, you will see that when we are getting the details of all the users, there also we can see that we have the password property also in the response with the encrypted password. So what we want is when we are going to get the user detail in the user detail, we don't want to show this password property. And for that, all we have to do is in our user schema. So let's open this models and in the user schema, we are going to set one more property here for the password, one more uh, validation you can say. And there we are going to set select to false. Okay, by default, this select will be true for all other properties, but we can set it to false by explicitly specifying it. Let's save the changes here. Let's go to Postman now and let's make a request now. And now you can see we don't have any password property in the response. If I scroll down for the second object also, you will not see password property. Then let's go to get logged user. And there, let's make a request again. And in the response, now we should not have the password property. So this is one change which I wanted to do because in the response, I don't want to send the value of this password. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set the minimum length for a password as eight characters. So for that, I'm going to also use this min length property and I'm going to set it to eight. So now, whenever the user will specify a password, that password has a minimum length of eight characters. Let's save this. And the second change which I want to do is, if I go to this user controller.js, here we are making get request. So whenever we are going to make a get request, and if we get the response, the status code should be 200. That means we made a get request, we successfully got the response. So in that case, the status code should be 200. But when we are making a post request from here, using this user signup API, using this user signup API, we are creating a resource on the server. We are creating a new user in the database. Okay, so in that case, instead of sending the status code as 200, what we want is we want to send the status code as 201, which means created. And to set a status code on the response, let me go ahead and let me open this authcontroller.js. So to set a status code on the response, we can use the status property just before sending the response. So for that here, we can say response.status. And here we can specify the status code. Now here, this response which we are sending, this response we are sending because with the given email, the user already exists. So basically the data which we have received in the request body, that is not the proper data. So in that case, what we can do is we can set the status code to 400, which means bad request because the request which the user has made, that request has a request body which contains bad data. Okay. In the same way, if I scroll down from here also, we are sending a response and this time we are sending a response with success as true. So in this case, when we are sending this response, that means the user is created successfully. So in this case also, we want to set the status and here I'm going to set the status to 201, which means created. So in this way, you can also set the status of the response based on what operation you have performed on the incoming request. Now, if you don't specify this status property explicitly, as I mentioned, 
the status will be by default 200. So for all other responses which we are sending, for that we want to keep the status code as 200. So in case of login request, since we are not creating any resource using this login request on the server, we are simply validating an existing resource, an existing user. From here, I'm simply going to send the status code 200. Okay, so since it is a default status code, I'm not going to set it. But for the error responses, which we are sending from here, for that, we can set the status to 400. Okay, let's do the same thing here as well. Okay. And you can do the same thing in user controller also. So from wherever you are sending a bad request, there you can set the status code to 400. Okay, with this, let's save the changes and let's quickly test it. So I'm going to create a new user. I'll call it Steve Smith steve smith at gmail.com and i'll keep the password as test1234 let's send the request here you can see in the status code the status code is 201 created all right so these are the two things which i wanted to change in the response which we are sending so i wanted to remove this password from the response and i also wanted to set the appropriate status code with the response and that we can do using this status method before using this send method this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day